Gas stations are getting you where you need to go this holiday season with record cheap prices. Josh Breider is going to break down the numbers. And police officers will be in Madison's high schools next year. We'll tell you about the changes to the program just approved by the school board. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning and welcome to News 3 This Morning. <laughs> it is Tuesday, December 18th. Future's so It's bright. a beach day. I know. I, I didn't even realize she <laughs> snuck those on to the desk here. She threw me off there. I thought you were putting on your actual specs. Well, you're lucky I left my towel and my swimsuit at the desk. <laughs> For now. <laughs> For now. For now. <laughs> well, if your idea of a beach day is maybe long pants and a long sleeve shirt, right. you're set today. <laughs> You'll be just fine. <laughs> Bring on the tan. <laughs> Come on, you guys. <laughs> but you will need the sunglasses today, yeah. Leah. You're just about an hour and a half before the sunrise. So, oh, a little just, early. You know, yeah, just a little early. I'm excited, Heather. Early bird gets the warm, though, we <laughs> always say. Here's a look at our temperatures. It is a little colder this morning than it was this time yesterday. Here's the actual number, 24 in Madison. We're actually up several degrees. It was 19 last hour, 21 in Janesville, 27 in Platteville. We have a great forecast coming up. If you liked yesterday, our high was 40. Today we'll top at 47 degrees. The record I checked is 53, so we're not close to setting any records today, but it's pretty darn mild, almost 20 degrees warmer than it should be for this time of the year. Here's a look at your first alert traffic maps this morning. A few brake lights showing up on Stoughton Road, a little busy over there right around the Beltline, but otherwise no accidents to report. Looks like you're still going at posted speeds on all those major routes into Madison. That is what we like to see, especially with the sunshine on the way. I just filled up the washer fluid in the Ooh, windshield. Smart. I had to because the glare even yeah. yesterday was a bit rough. It's hard to see at times. Yeah. You can borrow these if you'd like. Take the bike today if you wanted. Yeah, so that's mild. true. She's set. There you go. Oh yeah, I'm taking these. Classy. <laughs> Thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. All right, tis the season for backed up Beltline traffic and a lot of, Mom, are we there yet? Coming from the back seat. Yeah, I think Hattie knows a little bit more about yeah. that than we do. But this year, <laughs> more Americans than ever before will make some sort of trip during the holidays. About a third of us, in fact. Mr. I filled my tank for $20. Josh Spreider <laughs> is live on the east side with more on the travel forecast. Hi. Good morning. Yes, I am a happy camper this morning and my wallet is especially happy. AAA says we're seeing the lowest gas prices in 18 months. In Madison, we're seeing an average right now of about 218 a gallon, but you'll find it as cheap as 209 and even 208 in some areas. Last year at this time, we were paying 228, so quite a bit cheaper. Those low gas prices are just one driving force for people hitting the road this holiday season. AAA expects a record 112 million of us will be traveling starting this weekend. That equates to more than one-third of Americans. AAA says a low unemployment rate and a stronger economy are leaving people with more money in their pockets this year. Air travel is expected to be the highest level in 15 years, but most of us will be traveling by car and for really good reason, especially here in Wisconsin. Gas prices are, are the big treat uh, this holiday season. We're seeing the lowest prices, not just of this year, but really in the last 18 months. Uh, and that's something that we expect is gonna continue through this year on holiday travel season. AAA says it's still unclear what early next year will mean for gas prices with some recent changes made to OPEC. Now, because more people will be on the road and at the airports this year, AAA is reminding people to be patient and give yourself some extra time so you can get your destination safely. And yes, Sanic, I'm a happy camper this morning. $20 is a pretty big deal. Every penny counts, especially this time of the year. Hey, I I'm not arguing with you. It's rightfully so. I, I, <laughs> I can't believe it. I like the bragging. It's No, it's, it's a good brag and, and some inspiration for me to get out and fill my tank today. Oh, yeah. So, all right. Josh Fighter reporting live from the east side. Thank you, Josh. All right, take a look at this video. Tow truck drivers are asking you to slow down and move over for vehicles working on the side of the road after this crash. This is dash cam video of a car hitting a finish line towing truck on the side of the belt line over the weekend. The driver, 18-year-old Azad Suleiman, ran off away on foot but was later arrested. No one was hurt in that crash. Finish line towing staff say it takes just a couple of minutes to avoid a tragedy and follow the law. We are continuing to follow the deadly outbreak of a severe form of pneumonia that has now killed three patients at UW Hospital. A spokesperson with the hospital says 14 people in all have been diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease. One of those patients is still in the hospital this morning. The three people who died 
all had serious health conditions before contracting the bacteria, according to the hospital. Now, the remaining 10 have been discharged and are doing well. The hospital, you may remember, flushed its hot water lines last month after it appeared the outbreak was connected to that system. Officials say that hyperchlorination process has been effective in disinfecting the pipes. In Middleton, officers are looking for the man who tried to rob the Arby's in town last night. Police say it happened around 7 when a young man walked into the store with a hood pulled over his face. He jumped over the counter and pulled a gun on employees there but did not get away with any money. Anyone with information should call the number right there on your screen. A 17-year-old could be facing charges after a Marquette County school was put on lockdown for a school shooting threat. Police shut down the Westfield School District yesterday morning for that threat. The district says a student made it through a CIA reporting page, so it took a while for officers to track where exactly it came from. By noon, police found the suspect and said there was no danger to the school. The sheriff's office says it will refer charges against the 17-year-old to the county DA. A 39-year-old man is facing charges this morning for allegedly stealing a gun and then pointing it at the person he stole it from. Madison police say officers responded to the 100 block of State Street just off the Capitol Square around 7.30 last night. A 21-year-old had been openly carrying multiple firearms in the area when the suspect forcibly took one of them during an argument. That man then pointed the gun at the victim who responded by pointing another gun back at the suspect. That man ran away before police tracked him down and took him into custody. He does face multiple charges this morning, including being a felon in possession of a firearm and strong armed robbery. New this morning, police officers will stay in Madison's four high schools after the school board approved a new contract last night. The State Journal reports that contract emphasizes alternative discipline measures over arresting students. That change is in response to concerns from parents and teachers who wanted to see the officers removed from schools entirely. The contract also outlines a process for students and family members or even staff to file complaints against an officer and allows the district to fire an officer if necessary. Common Council still needs to approve that contract. People living near Tree Lane Apartments on Madison's west side are getting the chance to talk directly to city officials this week about the number of police calls they're seeing to their neighborhood. That complex has only been open for five months, but it's already had more than 200 police calls in that time, including a shooting there about a month ago. A meeting was held yesterday at Blackhawk Church for Westside residents to talk about potential long-term solutions. Those include full-time security guards, social workers, and even evictions if necessary. Police Chief Mike Koval was there last night and stressed that the majority of the tenants aren't the problem. Mayor Soglin has put his deputy mayor, Gloria Reyes, in charge of the situation as an emergency site manager. She's going to be at a community meeting this afternoon to talk with neighbors again. That's happening from 4 until 5 at the Alicia Ashman Library on North High Point Road. All right, 6.07 your time now. The system cannot support more inmates every year. That's the conclusion of a report on who and how many people are being booked into the Dane County Jail. We're going to have those details straight ahead. Before that, though, I imagine some of your kids are going to want to break out the short sleeves for today's forecast. Maybe remind them it's still December. Come despite on. the really mild sunny day Hattie has in store, she'll have your first alert forecast when News Through This Morning returns.
Good morning from the Hattio patio. Not a bad start this morning. Temperatures are in the teens and 20s, but mild weather is in the forecast for today. Take a look at high temperatures yesterday, showing you the Midwest perspective so you can see how close those real warm temperatures were. 52 in St. Louis yesterday, 48 in Des Moines, 36 in Minneapolis, even 48 in Springfield. Now here in Madison, we topped at 40 degrees yesterday, but I think temperatures are going to be a little warmer than that today. Nothing showing up on the radar map around here. Little bit of cloud cover to the west, but those clouds shouldn't bother us today. You can see they are starting to already fall apart. So our forecast calls for a lot of sunshine. Temperatures now in the 20s in most spots. We did have some teens on the map earlier. Let's zoom in and see if anyone's still in the teens. 19 in Watertown right now, 17 in Boscoville, and 16 in Camp Douglas. But temperatures are already starting to warm up this morning. We have a light southeasterly wind this morning that will shift to the south as we go through the day today. Take a look at those wind speeds. They do increase a little bit, so we're looking at about a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind this afternoon, but that will boost temperatures up even higher than they were yesterday. Your future track forecast map shows you temperatures quickly warming through the 20s and 30s this morning. Closing in on low 40s by lunchtime. It's already warmer than we were yesterday and then hitting highs in the mid to upper 40s this afternoon. So enjoy the mild temperatures. Normal high this time of the year is 29 degrees. So we're almost 20 degrees above that. Staying quiet through the evening, but an increase in the clouds is expected overnight tonight. And then on Wednesday, there's a chance for a few showers, but temperatures will be warm enough that it's all rain in the forecast during the day on Wednesday. Now, Wednesday night into Thursday, it does start to get a little colder around here. So we may see a, a little bit of a mix with snow or even a change over to snow for a short time early Thursday. Little to no snow accumulation though is expected from that system. Temperatures are going to cool down. We have another chance for some light snow on Saturday and that's about it before the Christmas holidays. So if you're looking for a white Christmas, not looking the best here across southern Wisconsin. Let's get a check on those traffic maps this morning. Pretty quiet weather should mean good conditions on the roads. Let's see what Josh Tim has to say. Yeah, it is starting off pretty quiet on the Beltline this morning. No delays showing up yet in either direction so far. Other roads here in Ding County not looking too bad. Just a few brake lights popping up on Stoughton Road and Verona Road near the Beltline. Things are moving well downtown around the Capitol Square and UW campus. Volume not an issue at this point. Other, any other main routes leading into the Madison area are moving along at the usual speeds with no crashes or delays. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. All right, thank you, Josh. Thank you, Hattie. In Chicago this morning, two police officers are dead after an accident with a train last night. 37-year-old Eduardo Marmolejo and 31-year-old Conrad Gary were investigating reports of shots fired when they were hit by a passing train. Witnesses say they saw the police chase, then heard the screech of the train trying to stop. Police say they have found a weapon at the scene and are questioning a person of interest this morning. The department says the two officers lost their lives protecting their community from a gunman. Back in our area, the number of people spending time in the Dane County Jail continues to increase in recent years, and proportionally more inmates are guilty of violent crimes. That's according to the latest data from an outside consultant. That report suggests the county needs to make every effort necessary to cut down on the average length of stay in prison. As far as disparities in the jail go, African American men make up 44% of the average population on any given day, while white men account for about two of every five inmates. The committee in charge of reviewing the $76 million jail renovation project will hear more about those stats at its meeting tonight. Dane County leaders want some help from the state to make sure 911 systems can keep up with new technology. The formal resolution would urge the governor and legislature to budget $7 million each year to make sure counties can pay for those upgrades. It suggests that money would come from the police and fire protection fee, which we all pay on our wireless plans, landlines and cell phone bills. The Public Protection and Judiciary Committee will decide whether that resolution should go to the full Board of Supervisors later on today. That same group will also talk about creating a new position in the district's attor district attorney's office, that is. That prosecutor would focus on domestic violence and sexual assault cases in Dane and 18 surrounding counties. That job would be funded through a $125,000 grant. 
from the Department of Justice. All right, it's almost 616 on this Tuesday morning, and even though it's been relatively warm during the day, nighttime lows are still in the 20s and 30s. We'll tell you how the city's newest resource for the homeless is helping people be prepared for that weather. 20 degrees above normal during the day, at least. 20 degrees, people. I'm okay without a white Christmas <laughs> if it means we're going to stay in the upper 40s, at least for a couple of days here. We'll have another check on Hattie's forecast when News 3 This Morning returns. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Hattie McLean. We can just start to see the first glimpse of the sunrise this morning as you look towards the east. We'll see plenty of sunshine in the forecast today. It's a little colder outside right now, but a nice warm-up is in the forecast. Temperatures are generally in the 20s at this hour, but take a look at the highs. Your bus stop weather forecast calls for a chilly start today with sunshine, but temperatures climbing to a high of 47 degrees this afternoon with plenty of sun. Don't get used to these real mild conditions. Temperatures are going to cool down as we go through the rest of the week. Have a wonderful day. Hattie, thank you so much. So it looks like Midwest nice prevails as Madison is being named the most caring city in the United States. That study from Wallet Hub ranked Madison 17th in the nation for the percentage of homeless people who are able to find shelter as well as child poverty. Madison was fourth for how teachers care for their students' well being and the number of physicians per capita. And then we came in second for the number of people working in community and social services. That put us number one overall, followed by New York City, Lincoln, Nebraska, Pittsburgh, 
and Jersey City, New Jersey. Here's an example of that caring nature. Today, there's an effort happening to keep dozens of people in the Madison area with no place to call home warm at night. The city's Convention and Visitors Bureau is donating more than 200 coats and winter clothes to the Beacon Homeless Center. The Beacon serves 225 men, women, and children every day. If you're interested in helping out, the Bureau is organizing a second drop-off later in the winter at YWCA Madison, so people are still encouraged to keep donating. The Red Cross is hoping you're in the giving spirit when it comes to blood donations this time of year. The organization actually sees a decline in donations over the holiday season, and the blood and platelets help save lives through this time. Now, anyone who donates between now and January 6th will receive a long-sleeved Red Cross t-shirt while they last. There are a number of drives going on in our area today. To make an appointment, you can visit redcrossblood.org or call the number there on your screen, 1-800-733-2767. There is a school district here in Wisconsin using a state grant for security measures for a different type of training for its teachers. Wisconsin Public Radio reports Union Grove Elementary is spending a portion of that grant money on 70 kits to stop bleeding. The school's leadership says as situations like school shootings become a real concern, training needs to reflect that. Among other things, the kits will help train staff members to make tourniquets out of everyday items they can find in the classroom. The district wants to have its teachers trained on how to use those kits by the end of January. Families in Columbia County might be interested in a presentation happening tonight about Juul products and e-cigarettes. According to a new survey by researchers at the University of Michigan, it was out just this week, showed a growing number of American teenagers are vaping while use of alcohol and other drugs is going down. Parents can learn more about the trends and the policies that affect their community starting at 6 o'clock tonight in the Portage High School Auditorium. 622 now. A former police officer here in Wisconsin is suing the makers of Making a Murderer. His lawyer says he's been dealing with years of, quote, ridicule and disdain. And the city's relaxing a rule that required cab companies to run around the clock after a number of violent robberies targeting taxi drivers. The day's top stories are next on News 3 This Morning.
lame duck legislation to scale back Wisconsin's early voting period is up for debate in a federal courtroom today. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the cheapest gas of the year. I'm Josh Water live and coming up we're talking low gas prices and record travel numbers. That's coming up on News 3 this morning. This is News 3 this morning. Keep your day job, Josh. We have lost control of the show. Oh we goodness. have officially lost control, everyone. <laughs> Good morning, by the way. <laughs> Welcome to the final half hour of the Christmas Carol Show here. News 3 this morning. It is 626 now on this Tuesday, December 18th. Josh has a lot more to sing about than just low, cheap prices yeah. at the gas pump. He's also standing outside in pretty decent weather and it's only going up from here. Yeah, I'm going to spare you the singing because of my <laughs> congestion, but I will leave that to Hattie McLean out on the patio because she has reason to get, look, she's like, no way, Jose. Uh -uh. Okay, I'm just getting over that congestion. No singing right now for me. But the birds are singing in the backyard weather patio. They're pretty loud this morning. Probably chit-chatting about the mild temperatures that we have in the forecast today. I think you're going to like the forecast. Take a look at those current conditions. 24 degrees here in Madison. Skies are mostly clear this morning. Is a little bit of a wind chill, but take a look at the numbers elsewhere across the uh, area. 28 in Platteville and Mineral Point. 21 right now in Janesville. Even 26 in the Dells. As you head out the door this morning, you definitely don't need as many layers. It's going to be a gorgeous day with highs in the mid to upper 40s. We should top right around 47 here in Madison this afternoon. So enjoy those mild temperatures. No fog to report this morning and no major issues on the roads. Just a few brake lights showing up uh, near the Beltline and Stoughton Road. Otherwise, here's a look at your traffic times. Looks like you're still going at posted speeds, so not adding any extra minutes to your commute just yet. And that's your first alert traffic. All right, Hattie, thank you so much. So speaking of travel, gas prices across the country are the cheapest we have seen during the month of December in years. Yeah, the national average is right around 236 for a gallon of regular this morning, which might explain why a record number of people are going to hit the road this holiday season. Josh Breider is live with a preview and a reminder that patience is key. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. That's right. We are going to be saving big this holiday season. And you mentioned those national average. We're actually going to be cheaper than that here in Wisconsin and especially in Madison. We're seeing an average price around 218 right now and even places like here at this mobile gas station around 209. So we are saving a lot this holiday season and it was about uh, 20 cents more than that this time last year. In addition to lower gas prices, AAA finds many factors motivating more Americans to hit the road for the holidays, including lower unemployment and a stronger economy. If you're still trying to figure out when to leave, because Christmas falls on a Tuesday this year, AAA expects Saturday the 22nd and Sunday the 23rd, as well as the Wednesday the after Christmas to be the busiest travel days. Christmas Eve and Christmas will see lighter crowds. The biggest thing is to just be patient out there. Uh, expect that you're going to see delays, particularly if you're heading through any metropolitan areas. Here in Wisconsin, 2.1 million of you will be traveling by car. That's up nearly 5% over last year. As far as air travel, more than 123,000 of you will travel by plane. That's up 4.3%. And now if you want to save yourself even more pennies at the pump, AAA and others have programs through your cell phone that you can actually sign up and get deals at certain gas stations. And we've known that all of us, we're trying to save money and every penny counts this time of year. Fa -la, 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 la la Back to you, ladies. <laughs> Josh, I want to ride with you this holiday season. I bet that car ride is a joy. <laughs> yeah, you can uh, ask my fiance about that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think I know what the answer is. Josh Breider singing yeah. for us this morning. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Keep it coming, man. Keep it coming. All right, the city of Madison is scaling back its regulations for taxi companies at least for the short term, in order to keep those drivers safe. You may remember four green cab drivers were robbed over the weekend, some at gunpoint. As a result, the company cut back on their hours and limited its service to pre-scheduled rides only. That was technically against a city ordinance that requires them to run 24-7, but the owners said it wasn't worth the risk of putting their employees in harm's way. Now, the city is backing them up. One of the, you know, very priority for us is the driver's safety. Um, so. Uh, given the current situation, we feel like it's reasonable to suspend the enforcement of the, of the ordinance on this. 
The city does plan to start enforcing the 24-7 rule again once police make arrests in these armed robbery cases. So far, no other cab companies have pulled their fleets. Union Cab, though, which was also targeted in a robbery this past week, says it is giving the drivers the option to not work if they don't feel safe behind the wheel. A former detective with the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department is suing the filmmakers who produced the Netflix series Making a Murderer. Detective Andrew Colburn filed that lawsuit yesterday, alleging the documentary is defamatory. Colburn helped convict Stephen Avery in the 2005 killing of photographer Teresa Halbach. Colburn says the series was edited to make viewers think that he and others planted evidence to frame Avery. A coalition of liberal-leaning groups is taking one of the bills signed last week by Governor Walker to federal court. That law limits early voting, so it has to happen within two weeks of an election and not before that. Well, limiting it to two weeks um, was ruled unconstitutional in 2016, um, you know, particularly on the basis of race, um, which was what was ruled uh, in, our, in our 2016 case. So Governor Walker and Republican lawmakers argue having the same early voting period statewide is actually more fair. Before Walker signed the bills into law last week, city and county clerks have been allowed to set their own early voting rules. Meanwhile, in Michigan, voters are waiting to see if a series of lame duck bills there will be signed into law by the outgoing Republican governor. Those bills would have a similar effect as the ones Governor Walker just signed here in Wisconsin, stripping powers from the incoming Democratic Attorney General and Secretary of State of Michigan. It's not clear if Governor Rick Snyder will sign that legislation, since he hasn't always supported his GOP lawmakers during his eight-year tenure. He says signing that legislation, though, is a matter of best public policy for the state, not about his legacy or his party. We expect Governor Scott Walker to return to Wisconsin today after spending yesterday in D.C. You're looking at pictures here of the White House reception he attended yesterday as there's still speculation about him joining the president's administration. Bloomberg Business recently reported that Walker is up for the job of Interior Secretary once Ryan Zinke leaves that office. A Walker spokesperson would not go into any more detail about his visit to Washington. The governor says that he plans to stay in Wisconsin even after Governor-elect Tony Evers is sworn in on January 7th. 6.33 now. There is an update to share about a deadly outbreak of Legionnaires that originated at UW Hospital. That story is coming up in the morning sprint. And for someone who dreamed of coaching Division I men's basketball back in the day, I am loving this story about a woman moving up in the NBA and making history by doing it. Yes. We will share some more of that serious girl power when News 3 this morning returns.
Welcome back. It is 636. And we always ask you to share your morning with us. Kevin shared this one. It was irresistible. Couldn't not share it. I mean, come on. He posted it on Facebook. It's a sunrise in Argyle. That is professional quality work right there, Kev. Yeah, really, really nice. I I'm convincing myself there's no filter on this just for the sake of sunrises, but you know what? I don't really even mind if there is. Pure southern Wisconsin yep. beauty right there, I think. Thanks so much for sharing, Kevin. What does your morning look like? Take a picture, post it on our Facebook page or on Twitter, and use the hashtag MyNews3Morning so Danica and I can find our favorites and share them right here on the program. All right, if you live on the north side, you're about to get a new restaurant to check out in the new year. Kingdom is a West African takeout spot. It's currently got a setup in the Capitol Petro Station on East Wash. The restaurant's going to open up a second location, though, in the old coffee gallery inside the Northside Town Center. This spot is going to have plenty of space for sit-down breakfast, lunch, and dinner instead of just takeout. They are hoping to open up by the start of January. A new chocolate shop will open on Madison's east side later today, but there won't be much candy for sale. That's because the owner of the new Coco Va Chocolatier says her product was contaminated by fumes from construction at the yoga studio next door. Vara Adari says she's throwing out thousands of dollars in chocolate that tasted like chemicals and she won't have any available on what could have been a huge week for holiday sales. The construction company says the fumes are just a byproduct of the construction process. Kokova is hoping to start making chocolate before Christmas. All right, in sports news this morning, the Indiana Pacers are making history by naming the first female assistant general manager in the NBA. I would say that to any young girl, you know, from an aspirational standpoint, you, know, you, you can now play professionally, you can now work professionally in a front office. Um, you know, if I'm the first, then that just means there's many more to come after me. Oh yeah, Kelly Kroskoff grew up in Southern Texas playing basketball in the backyard. She has been a top executive for the Pacers for 19 seasons. Major League Baseball, by the way, already has three female assistant general managers. However, the NFL and the NHL have none so far. Step it up, leagues. I so love that far, story. Not yet, but I'm sure she'll be setting the pace. No pun intended. Ooh, good okay. one. <laughs> I like that. All right. Two Minnesota police officers are becoming internet sensations for how they handled a noise complaint. Yeah, listen to this. That complaint came over the weekend for a group of friends in St. Paul playing Super Smash Brothers. Things were getting heated as they <laughs> tried out the latest version of the game, but instead of telling them to quiet down, the officers grabbed a controller and jumped in. One of the officers stole the local newspaper. He'd never played the game, so he said, why not? <laughs> they did not issue any citations. I guess if you can't beat them or ticket them, <laughs> join them. Yeah, if you can't ticket them, <laughs> they could have ticketed them, but instead, uh, yeah, I think that's a really cool way. And we have not played I know, Smash full Brothers. disclosure, we haven't. So maybe we just need to crash a party sometime. And, yeah, and we've both done in. the driving one. Yeah. We could take you guys on in that. But that's, We're obviously that's we very in tune with the video game world. So if anyone likes to school us, just go ahead and give the station a call. <laughs> give us a jingle. Find us on Twitter. We'd love some lessons. All right, moving on. 6.39 your time now. I'm not sure we can mention this enough. Hattie's bumping, bumping up the high temperatures today with highs almost 20 degrees above normal. With lots of sunshine to boot, take a look at that sunrise. Mm -hmm. Hoping to get some more of my morning picks out of that. Doesn't get much better than this for mid-December. Her forecast is next. First, though, it is December 18th. We want to say happy birthday to this cutie pie here. Grant and all the kiddos turning three today. Thanks for celebrating with us right here on News 3 this morning.
Look at that sunrise. That's a live look downtown at the Capitol this morning. Hattie says there's just more of that where that came from. Highs getting up near 50 today. We'll check in with her in just a minute. Well, you can't tell by the weather, but we are one week. I repeat, one week from <laughs> Christmas. So if you haven't gotten that family Christmas card to grandma in the mail yet, I'm talking to you, mom. You have at least a few more days. Yeah, USPS says anything being sent through first class or priority mail does need to be postmarked by Thursday in order to be sure it gets to where it needs to be by Christmas Day. By the way, if Congress does not pass a new spending bill by midnight Friday into Saturday, the Postal Service would not be one of the federal agencies that was shut down. So that should not affect your packages and letters getting to their destinations on time. Speaking of the holidays, check this out. A Mount Hora business is taking part in a nationwide competition for who can build the most unique Christmas tree. Brunzel Lumber and Millworks usually makes trusses for construction projects, so they use that expertise when putting together this design by stacking trusses together to create those branches. The business submitted the tree for judging yesterday and hopes to hear back soon if they won. We need more decorations like that around Hads to keep us in the Christmas mood because we are not getting it from this weather. Yeah, that's true. We don't have any snow in the forecast. None on the ground here across southern Wisconsin either. Take a look at the snow depth map. Thought I'd check it out. We're one week before Christmas and not seeing a lot of snow on the ground for anywhere in Wisconsin. Just a couple of inches on the ground as you head north of Madison. A little bit uh, heavier snowpack for southeastern Minnesota with a, a storm system a couple of weeks ago there. But overall pretty dry conditions across the upper Midwest. Now look at the GFS future track forecast model. We can use this model to look uh, way out into the future and we'll show you what's going to happen over the next couple of days. As far as storm systems and snow chances here, well it's too warm for that. Southerly winds continue today into tomorrow. So any chance for precipitation on Wednesday falls in the form of some light rain showers. Now late Wednesday into Thursday some colder air moving in may see a changeover to a mix of rain and snow but really no accumulation accumulation is expected with that particular system. Staying dry then through the day on Friday, but notice those winds shift to the northwest. Things are going to cool down as we head towards the Christmas holiday. And I'm watching a potential uh, clipper system for Saturday. That brings a chance for some light snow here across southern Wisconsin. After that, looking pretty dry as we head into the Christmas holiday. Now we're not going to see a lot of snow. There is a chance we'll see some light accumulation on Saturday, but it generally looks right now like it's going to be less than an inch. Here's a look at our high temperature trend. Even though it doesn't necessarily look like December or Christmas time, temperatures are going to trend downward as we head towards the holiday. Take a look at today's high, though, 47 degrees. The normal high is 29, so we are almost 20 degrees above that. Here's a look at satellite and radar trends. If you are traveling today, pretty darn quiet around here. No flight delays showing up in the Midwest. There is some fog, though, across parts of the southern uh, tier of the United States, but no flight delays to report this morning. Your travel forecast, though, calls for uh, pretty quiet conditions all the way from California to the East Coast. We're not looking at any precipitation on the map today. Just a chance for some rain in the Pacific Northwest with the storm system moving onshore there. So if today is your travel day, looking pretty good. We're starting with temperatures in the 20s here this morning. 24 in the Dells as well as Madison. Watertown is now up to 20 degrees this morning. Winds will shift to the south and increase through the afternoon, 10 to 15 miles an hour. So maybe feeling a little bit breezy at times, but those south winds will help us warm up. Here's a look at your pinpoint city forecast highs. 43 in New Glarus as well as Stoughton today, 47 in Middleton and 44 in Prairie du Chien, 45 today in Muscaday. Lots of sunshine to the north. Temperatures will be a little bit cooler though. 41 in Mauston as well as Montello. Now here in Madison, we're looking at high temperatures right around 47 degrees today. That's quite mild for this time of the year and even warmer than it was on yes uh, yesterday. We will see temperatures drop back. A little bit of rain possible Wednesday, maybe mixing with snow late Wednesday into Thursday. Pretty quiet though through the rest of the week. There's just that chance for snow on Saturday. Take a look at thunder in Baraboo. <laughs> Perched right by the window. You know, I've had cats growing up all through my life and they love to sit oh, yeah. on those sunny windowsills. I'm taking my cues from him, so yeah. I'm bathing today. Yeah, why not? Thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. Morning Sprint's coming up next right here on News 3 This Morning.
is just about 6.51. Time now for the morning sprint. We will be almost 20 degrees above normal today with plenty of sunshine. Not so festive for getting in the holiday spirit, but the low gas prices could help with that. Josh Breider has those details. Hi, Josh. Good morning. Yeah, we're seeing the lowest gas prices in 18 months here in Madison. On average, you'll pay around 2.18 a gallon. That's about 20 cents lower than it was this time last year. Because of those lower gas prices, a stronger economy and also a low unemployment rate, a record number of people are expected to travel this holiday season. An estimated one third of Americans will travel. Here in Wisconsin, 2.1 million of you will be traveling by car. That's up nearly 5%. 123,000 Wisconsinites will travel by plane. That's up 4%. 3% over last year. Because Christmas falls on a Tuesday this year, AAA expects Saturday the 22nd and Sunday the 23rd, as well as Wednesday the 26th to be the busiest travel days. AAA encourages you to plan ahead and be patient if you're one of those traveling. Thank you, Josh. If you are one of the millions flying this holiday season, federal officers are no longer authorized to follow random people as they go to the bathroom or use their phones. Earlier this year, the Boston Globe reported undercover armed federal marshals were monitoring certain travelers even if they weren't on a terror watch list or suspected of a crime. That could include personal conversations, restroom visits, and clothing changes. The TSA says it will continue the so-called Quiet Skies program, but will only file a report if a person does something notable. There is a new contract to keep police officers in Madison's four high schools this morning. It emphasizes alternative discipline measures instead of arresting students in response to a number of community members who've asked the school board to remove those officers. The contract also outlines a process for students, family members, and staff to file complaints against an officer and allows the district to fire an officer for cause. City Council still needs to approve that contract. And here's a live look outside this morning from the WIC TV Sky Cam. Skies are clear. Sun comes up about 725 this morning. Our temperatures will climb quickly through the morning hours. We're headed to highs around 47 degrees with sunshine sticking around through the afternoon. Thank you so much, Hattie. A 39-year-old man is in custody this morning for allegedly stealing a gun and pointing it at the person he stole it from. Officers responded to the 100 block of State Street around 7.30 last night where the suspect forcibly took a gun from another man during an argument. The two pointed weapons at each other before the suspect ran away. Officers tracked him down and arrested him on multiple charges, including strong-armed robbery. Beverly Copper will step down from her position as Chancellor of UW-Whitewater before the new year, but in an email to campus, she didn't give a reason for her resignation. That announcement comes six months after her husband was banned from campus amid sexual harassment allegations from several different women. Copper will collect her full salary for the next eight months and stay on as staff as a professor. Three patients are dead after an outbreak of severe of severe form of pneumonia at UW Hospital. A spokesperson with that hospital now says 14 people have been diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease. One of those patients is still in the hospital. The three people who have died all had serious health conditions before contracting the bacteria. Now the remaining 10 individuals have been discharged and are doing well. In Chicago, two police officers are dead after they were hit by a train last night. Witnesses say the two were involved in a police chase when the witnesses heard the screech of a train trying to stop. Police say a weapon has been recovered and a person of interest in that chase is being questioned this morning. President Trump is tweeting good luck to his former security advisor Michael Flynn this morning. Flynn's expected to be sentenced later today after admitting to lying to the FBI last December about his contacts with Russian individuals during the presidential transition. Special counsel Robert Mueller is not recommending prison time due to Flynn's cooperation with the Russia probe. Meanwhile, the president continues to threaten a partial government shutdown if Democrats don't come to an agreement over funding for the border wall. If they can't reach a spending deal by the end of Friday, that shutdown would happen at midnight. A new national poll finds 54% of Americans oppose a shutdown, and 43% say they would blame President Trump and the Republicans if it happens. This would be the third shutdown just this year. A coalition of liberal groups is taking one of the bills signed by Governor Walker last week to federal court. That law limits early voting, so it has to happen within two weeks of an election and not any time before that. Governor Walker and Republican lawmakers argue having the same voting period statewide is more fair. A federal judge rejected a similar argument two years ago. Up until now, city and county clerks have been allowed to set their own early voting rules. On Madison's west side, people living near the Tree Lane Apartments are getting the chance to talk directly to city officials about some long-term safety solutions to a high number of police calls there. Those could include full-time security guards, social workers, and even evictions if necessary. 
The complex has only been open for about five months, but it's already had more than 200 police calls in that time, including a shooting there about a month ago. You can join the conversation at a meeting from 4 until 5 this afternoon at the Alicia Ashman Library on North High Point Road. The city of Madison is scaling back its regulations for taxi companies in an effort to keep drivers safe. Green Cab cut back on its hours and limited its service after four of its drivers were robbed over the weekend, some at gunpoint. That was technically against an ordinance that requires those cabs to run 24-7, but the city has since suspended that rule. The city plans to start enforcing it again once police makes arre make arrests, that is, in these armed robbery cases. 656 now. Let's turn it over to Josh Tim with the final look at your first alert traffic. Hey, Josh. Yeah, still moving all right on the Beltline. No major issues yet in either direction, although watch for that westbound side to continue to pick up as everyone heads out for the day. Inbound John Nolan beginning to tap the brakes at Olin Avenue and North Shore Drive moving into the downtown area. And other main routes leading into Madison, they're moving along at the usual speeds right now with no major crashes or delays. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thanks, Josh. And maybe feeling a little bit like spring today. We have cool, we had cool temperatures in November, but quite a warm up for the uh, middle part of December. Take a look at your day planner temperatures today. Sunshine in the forecast with highs right around 47 degrees. Not too shabby outside today. <laughs> Here's a look at that extended forecast. We do have some raindrops in the area, possible tomorrow, especially during the afternoon with a high of 42. And it looks like it will cool down as we head towards the Christmas holiday. It is still chilly this morning, kiddos, so it don't is. try to convince mom and dad to not wear the jacket today. You need at least a light jacket. Just something. I'm trying to work for you parents. <laughs> I'm trying to be on your side. Thanks for joining us this morning. We'll see you tomorrow. Making plants that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.